I'm Leroy Garcia, and this is Blue Rain Gallery Podcast. Today, we are visiting the Wheelwright Museum here in Museum Hill in Santa Fe. Um, and we are going to visit an uh, exhibit that was produced and curated by uh, Helen Tyndall. And uh, Helen is, uh, produced this based on her grandmother, Pablita Velarde's uh, work. And um, so welcome, Helen. Thank you. So, I'm happy to be here. Yeah. Helen is one of the artists uh, that we represent at Blue Rain Gallery, but she comes from a history, a storied history of painters, uh, which pretty much started with her grandmother, which is why we're here. Uh, her great grandma, right? Great grandmother, mm -hmm. yeah. I knew her so long, it just seemed like she was just your grandma, grandma. Mm -hmm. uh, but Helen's uh, was named after her grandma, uh, Helen Hardin. And obviously her mother, uh, Margaret Bagshaw Tindall, was also another very famous painter. But today we're going to talk about uh, great grandma Pablita Velarde, uh, Golden Dawn. Yes. I don't remember how they pronounce that in Tiwa, but uh, it's right here. Yes. <laughs> what is it called? <laughs> it's Seit San. Seit San. Right? San. Yeah. So uh, w this exhibit is a little bit of history of Pablita, uh, her, her wardrobe, her paintings, her dolls. Uh, so we'll let, we'll let um, Helen guide us a little bit. Tell us about your grandma. So Pablita Velarde was the first Native American woman to paint full-time as a career. She was born in 1918 in Santa Clara Pueblo. The, she then went to St. Catherine's Indian School where she studied under Tonita Pena and then the Santa Fe Indian School where she studied under Dorothy Dunn. Her career really got started with the WPA, she painted a series of work for them at Bandelier and then went on to have a very prolific career. She died in 2009 and she painted until she died. Um, her career was challenging being a single mom and a Native American woman in the time where she was painting. She really had to show a lot of tenacity and determination, but she ended up being uh, very well renowned and paved the way for many female artists today, like myself. Yeah. Um, in, in this exhibit, uh, we were talking beforehand, it, it includes the last painting she ever did, right? Yes. Which is unsigned. Let's walk over here and uh, look at this little exhibit. What's interesting about this last painting that Pablita did is something that um, anybody who visited Taos Pueblo uh, for their feast days would understand. So Helen, tell us a little bit about this painting. This is the Taos pole climb. So it starts with the Kasharis running around and playing jokes. They're very well known for being tricksters. And there's this very high pole. It's probably about 30 feet and there's the lamb and the food, and no one can eat until the kashari climbs all the way up to the top of the pole to untie everything. And frequently they stand at the top of the pole and you are just on nerves and um, watching because you're so afraid they're gonna fall. Um, so it's very tense, but very exciting. It's a very, very special um, day. So it's also known as San Geronimo Day. So my grandmother loved to go. So this was her last painting. Um, she was unable to sign it because she passed away. She got sick um, and passed away in about a week. So she was working until the very last days. And you're really able to see her layered painting style, um, how she would build up the layers and the depth. And something that I like to point out to people is all of the people are very old. She, her, the people in her paintings aged with her, and I think that's something that's really special. Yeah, that's <laughs> but what's also interesting about that uh, Taos pole climb is they grease that pole. Oh, they grease it? It's, it's I didn't even know that. And so they're always sliding, and, but somebody mm -hmm. eventually uh, climbs to the top and the, the wind's blowing, and you're like, how are you doing that? No. <laughs> that's why your grandma loved that. And, and of course, the Kasharis are uh, very kind of you know, spiritual figures to the Pueblo people, and they actually uh, gave blessings. However, with the tourists, they harass them pretty good. <laughs> oh, yeah. They've so, even dunked people in the river. Yeah, they throw them in the river. It's funny. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> they'll take the ladies' purses and all that stuff. But um, Pablita was a character as well, and I think that's why she did this. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's a, a, a really cool thing. Well, let's talk a little bit about some other things that she's done. Yes. So in the case behind me uh, is an exhibit 
that uh, was created by Helen. And um, what, what people don't realize is uh, Pablita was a great painter, uh, one of the more famous female native painters ever. But when she wasn't painting, she liked to do other things. And tell us about those other things. She loved to make dolls. When painting was a lot of work and she needed a break, but she was a very creative person and a very hard worker. So she would make these dolls. It was her own pattern. She would cut out the patterns from fabric and she dressed them. She made the moccasins, she made the jewelry. Everything is hand done. And she painted the faces. And she always liked to line them up like they were talking to each other. And it was really a fun thing for her to do, usually in the winter and then in the summer, getting ready for Eight Northern and Indian Market. Mm -hmm. People loved her dolls. Yeah, I'm wondering if she also did the Gallup ceremonial. <laughs> she did, yep. Yeah. Yeah. We definitely went to Gallup. Yeah. We were in the parade one time. Huh? Were you? Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, see, um, I see a photograph here. Um, is that Margaret? It is. That's yeah, my that's, mom. That's to Helen's mom being held by Pablita in a papoose, right? Mm -hmm. uh, pretty cool stuff. And then there's also photos of your grandma, Helen. Yes. And um, tell us a little bit about her. This is Helen Hardin. So she is Pablita's daughter. She was part of this vanguard group in the 60s, 70s, and early 80s that helped to transition native art from the traditional flat style of Pablita Velarde to the more contemporary style that we know today. Um, so she was the only female in this group, also a trailblazer. And unfortunately, she left this world at a very young age. She had breast cancer in her early 40s, but was still able to reach incredible heights in her career. So what Helen's mentioning about her grandma, Helen, um, she was in that period of avant-garde, uh, a change in contemporary Native art. You're talking about T.C. Cannon, R.C. Gorman, Earl Biss, uh, Tony Day, um, what, a, what a great generation, right? mm -hmm. uh, very innovative. But Derivative uh, started painting like her mom yes. in a way, right? And so she grew out, outgrew that style. So um, your grandma, your great grandma uh, had a wonderful career, but she worked in different mediums. We were talking about the dolls, mm -hmm. but let's talk a little bit about the paintings, okay. like the different styles that she did. So this, the paintings on the left and the right of deer, those are done in her earth pigment style. So she would actually be driving and traveling around and really like the color of the earth. And she would go and she would dig up a little bit and put it in a jar or a Folgers coffee tin and bring it home and then grind it on the mano and matate, which was usually used for grinding cornmeal. She would grind up the earth into a really fine dust and then she would mix it with hot water and Elmer's glue and she would paint in layers and it still had a very rough texture. So each painting is about six or seven layers and she would have to sand it down in between. Um, they're just really stunning pieces and very special to her. A lot of people can pair them to sand paintings but they're actually quite different. Well, it seems like it has like a mica feel to it, mm -hmm. like some mica mixed in there. Yes, and she did use a lot of micaceous earth also. So Helen um, curated, this, uh, curated this show with along with? Dr. Henrietta Leachy. She is the director here at The Wheelwright. So she has been very flexible and creative, and we're re really able to put this show together quickly. And I really appreciate the flexibility of the wheelwright to do this. That's yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool. So I'm going back to the case. Mm -hmm. um, so there's all this uh, wax paper that's yes. drawn on. Uh, tell us uh, about your grandma's process. So she would initially start in a sketch pad and she would draw her image and then she would erase it and correct it until it was perfect. And then she would take the wax paper and create um, copy the drawing and then copy it onto the board, which she ended up painting on. Um, but she was very methodical and really planned out all of her pieces. So when Helen uh, uh, cleaned up uh, Pablito's house, there was all kinds of wax paper drawings everywhere, right? Yes, I called <laughs> you over to see what to yeah, do with them. That, that's pretty cool mm -hmm. uh, that there's a history there. Um, let's go to the other room and okay. let's talk about your, your grandmother's wardrobe.
So we're here at uh, the next part of this exhibit, which is based on the vesture or uh, dressing uh, dresses that Pablito actually wore. Um, tell us a little about, did, did she make these herself or did she buy these things? What, how, how did she develop her style? So they're all handmade. Several of the outfits were made by her friend Theda Rushing, who she went to the Santa Fe Indian School. I'm not sure about some of the origins of the other pieces, but they are all handmade. They were in a cedar trunk for most of my life. And they also had the Pendleton blankets in it. And I remember as a little girl, my mom would open the trunk and we would pull some of the clothes out to get what we needed and then put them back. Um, the only outfit that I remember my grandma wearing is the... Uh, the, the, the Manta. The yes. Mm -hmm. Very traditional for Pueblo uh, people, especially during ceremony. Yes, and my mom and I would always go over to her house and help her get dressed and put the manta on and put the belt on extremely tight. Yeah, it, it, it seems like a style reminiscent of the, the 40s and 50s for mm -hmm. the most part, doesn't it? Yes, those mm -hmm. were very much the beginning of her career. Part of the exhibit really talks about the effort that she had to put into curating her own image so that she could become more, be taken more seriously and stand out in the right ways to really build her career. Yeah, and very, um, there, there's uh, hints of, of that era, 40s and 50s, but mm -hmm. then mixed in with a lot of Pueblo culture, the moccasins, the wrapped moccasins, which are very traditional. Mm -hmm. uh, for ceremonies and um, uh, just beautiful embroidery, uh, the sashes. I really mm -hmm. like the sash. It's a little different than the traditional the Pueblo stash, uh, sash, which is mostly reds and greens and whites. Mm -hmm. My mom liked to wear this sash. Yeah. <laughs> All the clothes got passed down, but my mom would just tie it around her ripped jeans with a big baggy t-shirt because yeah. she was very rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that Margaret was a character, yes. that's for sure. <laughs> Okay, so Pablita uh, in her vestures uh, very much so mixed the traditional with the non-traditional, but if you look at it, it looks pretty traditional overall. But this is a very traditional vesture. Tell us a little bit about this. Yes, um, this manta is one of the pieces that I remember wearing her wearing most. She wore it up until she was a very old lady, and there's pictures of her wearing it without the dress underneath. Um, it's very traditional to have women dress other women in Pueblo culture. So my mom and I would always go over to my grandma Pablita's house and help her get dressed and put everything on and wrap her moccasins. She was always very proud of her Santa Clara culture and really liked to carry that tradition with her. You can really see hints of that through all of her outfits. Yeah. And here we go, some more, uh, maybe not a traditional dress, but looks very traditional, right? Yes, so it is definitely Pueblo inspired. This dress was worn by everyone in my family. There's pictures of Pablita wearing it, of Helen Hardin, and of my mom, Margaret Bagshaw. So these clothes were really shared and it's amazing how they were able to transform traditional Pueblo culture into more contemporary styles throughout their art and their dress. And this polka dot outfit is one of my favorites. I think it's <laughs> very cute and very signature style for Helen and Margaret and Pablita. It's almost broom skirty, mm -hmm. thing, but they call broom skirt, yep. I think. And uh, like the Santa Fe Fiesta yeah, skirt. Yeah, very fiesta -y. Yes. Uh, that's pretty cool. And you can <laughs> see how tiny they were. Yeah, yeah. So they have these very powerful images and they were able to really create that even with their petite stature. Yeah, and again, the, the moccasins, which mm -hmm. ties it all in. <laughs> yes. It's pretty cool fashion, I think. It's, it's awesome. They were very stylish ladies. And I'm what really a wonderful happy. history you have, Helen. Thank you, I agree. <laughs> and thank you for representing all four generations. Yes, Blue Rain has had the opportunity to represent all four. And uh, I think your, your, I, I love your great grandma's work, but I, I like your grandma's. Mm -hmm. I really am fond of that. Uh, Helen Arden. Anyways, thank you again, Helen. Thank you. I always <laughs> love being on the podcast. I'd like to thank Helen for bringing us to the Wheelwright today to expose us to a little bit of history of her great grandma, Pablita Velarde. I'd like to encourage everybody to subscribe to her podcast. Um, if you have a hard time doing that, just go to blueraingallery.com under the menu bar. 
hit podcast and you'll you'll get to see this as well as other podcasts we've done including helen herself on her own art uh, i'd like to encourage people to go visit our online store bringprintshop.com and bring art into your everyday life this is a place where you can also find lots of helen tindo products thank you helen <laughs> thank you